Hello, thank you very much for checking out Tensei. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to build powerful, secure, and really flexible backend APIs for your applications using Tensei.js. It also comes with a content management system built in for all your needs as a business. So the first thing we are going to do is install a new application. And to do this, we need to run yarn create Tensei app and the name of the application. By default, this is going to generate a brand new application with SQLite set up for you. But Tensei also supports MongoDB, MySQL and PostgreSQL for your production application. Now it's going to generate something like this. And the first thing about Tensei is that it is so tiny. It gets the job done with as minimal code as possible. If you check out the generator project, we have just one file and that's an index.js file. Now, the second thing about Tensei is that it is so flexible and it's a plug and play mechanism. For example, if you do not need authentication in your application, you just remove the plugin. GraphQL, you don't need it, just remove the plugin. You need REST instead of GraphQL, pull out GraphQL, put in REST, really easy. Now, if you check out here, you'll see that we're requiring the auth media plugin. And this media is for the content management system. You don't need it, pull it out. No need for a latch bundle. We also have the plugins registered here. We have a CMS, media, auth, GraphQL plugin. And if you don't need any of this, you just remove that line of code. Really easy. Now, this is a, a ton of advantages or a ton of functionality for just 17 lines of code. So let's go ahead and boot it up. Run Yan Dev. It uses NodeMon to start our application in development. And this is going to show us the default beautiful Tensei application. And notice that this is coming because we have this welcome plugin registered. So in plugins, you can register new routes, endpoints, GraphQL queries, everything fully customizable. So now let's check out the CMS. And that is by visiting slash CMS. We can register a new administrator and this uses passwordless authentication so that your content management system is, is secure and really accessible for anyone trying to access it. So let's build a sample application so that you can see the power of Tensei. We are going to build a discussion forum application. Now let's think about a forum. First thing we need users to be able to post. Next we need posts and next we need replies or answers to these posts and probably need a system where the user can mark a post as the best reply. So to do that, we need to set up our resources. A resource will represent one of these things that we mentioned. We need a user resource, a discussion resource, a reply resource. So let's get started. Would require resource from the Tensei core. Then we are going to add dot resources. We'll call the resources method on the Tensei instance and pass in a new resource. In this case, the first one is discussion. Next, we will define some fields on the discussion resource using the fields function. Now, examples of fields we need here, we need the discussion to have a title and a body. And the title is of type text, so we would require the text function from the Tensei call, and this would be the text field, and we would say title. And we know this is required, so we are going to pass in some validation rules, in this case required, and we want it to be a max of 50 characters. We may not want to allow the user to update this title when updating a discussion. So we'd hide this on update API and this wouldn't show up on the REST API or the GraphQL API that is generated by Tensei. Now let's give a discussion a body. So would require the text area function and this would be body and would also make sure this is required. Now we may also want to make sure that this discussion belongs to a user. So we are going to require the belongs to function from the Tensei core and we would say belongs to user and user is the name of the resource that this is going to belong to. Now the reason why we haven't defined a user model is because the auth plugin comes by default with the user model. So we don't need to worry about that. That's it for our discussion resource. Let's go ahead and define our reply resource. So again, this would have a resource name of reply. Fields would be text area, and this would be the body of the reply. And we need to know the user. So we'd say this also belongs to a user. We also need to know the discussion that this belongs to. So we'd say belongs to discussion. 
We probably also want to add some validation rules to the discussion, so we'll make this required. Same thing with the user. Finally, we'll add a boolean field to know if finally we'll add a boolean field to know if this is the best reply. So we'll require the boolean function from the, the from the core and we'll call this and say best reply. And we'll default this to false. Okay, so we have our discussion, we have our reply, and we already have authentication set up by default in the auth plugin. So let's go ahead and visit our GraphQL API and see what we have generated with the two resources that we just registered. So I will visit slash GraphQL. And now if I visit the docs, I can see that I have discussion, discussions and discussions count queries generated for me. And this is going to fetch all the discussions, fetch a single discussion or fetch the count of discussions based on a certain filter query. We also have that for replies. And since we have the media plugin, we also have files in case we want to upload files and associate them with any resources. We also have a query to get the authenticated user. Then we have insert, update and delete as we need. All of this out of the box just by registering our resources. And if we check the update discussion and go to the arguments, you would notice that the title is not in there because we said we should hide the title on update API. In case we don't want to allow updating resources in general, then we can also call the hide on update API on the resource. Cool, right? Now let's see what happens on the CMS. Let's visit the CMS. Pass in my email, hey at catifrance.com. Now this is going to send a magic link to my email, but by default the mail driver is the console, so we would see the magic link in the console. So I'm going to click on that, and now I'm automatically locked into my CMS dashboard. On the left side, I have the resources that were registered. I have replies, and notice how it generates the really beautiful plural right there. I have discussions, I have discussions, and I also have users. Now, if I check out the discussion and click add discussion, you would see that we have a title and we have a body. We also have a user here so that we can select the user that's creating this discussion. So let's say that for the discussion, we do not want the normal text area. We want to write Markdown on the content management system. What we'll do is install a package, which is just a Tensei plugin. And this would be yan add Tensei slash MGE. And this is built by the Tensei team, but anyone in the community can build any sorts of plugins with Tensei really easily. Now, once that's installed, we can go ahead and require it. And first, we need to require two things. First, we'll require the markdown function. And this is just a field, just like text, boolean, text area. Finally, we need the MGE. And this is a plugin. And this plugin is going to register all the front end assets and React components needed to display the editor in the CMS. So we'll come down to our plugins and we'll add MGE that plugin finally would come to our fields and would replace text area with the markdown field okay and that's it we save start the application with yan dev if it was running it'll just automatically restart and now when we visit the cms and refresh yep we get a full-blown markdown editor let's get some lorem markdown copy the contents paste it in the editor preview and we can see that it renders and previews the markdown easily that's how easy it is to install a plugin for the things that you do not want to build yourself intensive so we've built a really amazing so we've built a really amazing tensei application now let's push it out to production how difficult could it be first we need to decide what database we want to use in production in this case we want to use postgres so i'm going to run yan add add micro rm slash postgres after installing the database plugin, we are going to push to a repository. So I'll git init, git add everything, git commit message, initial commit, and git remote add origin to a brand new repository that I just created. And I'll git push origin to master. Now that's pushed to master. Then I'm going to refresh. Okay, we have that repository there. I'm just going to come to Heroku, create a new Heroku application. Then give this name launch Tensei. Then create the app. And now since we're using Postgres, let's go ahead to the resources and add a new Postgres plugin. So I'll search for Postgres, select Heroku Postgres, submit the form for the free plan. 
now visit the settings and reveal configuration that's already plugged in our database url now we also need to set up our database type and this is going to be postgres ql we'll add that and now we are ready to deploy so we'll select github search for launch now i would connect my repository and hit the deploy button give that a few seconds and that's it the deployment is done so let's go ahead and view we we'll click that and it opens up the tensor application in the browser that's how easy it is to move from us a blank project build a complete forum with authentication we can literally add social authentication in two lines of code emails in two lines of code really easy to set up everything you need to build your own product with tensei so go ahead to launch tenseiheroapp.com and play with the api and please tweet me on twitter to tell me what your experience was and we would accept and would love to receive your feedback about what you think about what we've built with tensei so far it's currently in alpha but with your feedback and your help and your support we can move this to a stable release real soon thank you so much for watching up to this point and please hit me on twitter for any questions you have about tensei thank you